Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today I'm going to redo an old video from my old channel. That's where I took an LM317 voltage regulator IC and made an audio amplifier out of it. I'd like to thank True Voice of Reason, I believe that's his username. In the comment section of the last video he mentioned something about doing this video and I kind of forgot about it. I said, oh, okay, yeah, I'll do it. Plus my friend over on Hill's Workbench channel, he also kind of mentioned that it would be a good idea to do this video again. So that's what I'm going to do. I know some of you are asking, what about the amplifier project? Of course that's still going on. I have a lot to do on that. I wanted to get some other videos out, give that one a bit of a rest. Pretty committed to that, so don't worry. That's not going anywhere. I'm going to continue working on that. So yeah, back around 2010, I had my old channel, I think it was called VegMatic 1966 or something like that, which, uh, don't go looking for it because I taken that channel down back in 2012 and restarted my John Audio Tech channel you know, a couple months later. So I set up an LM317, like I said, to function as an audio amplifier. So a quick overview of the LM317. 317 voltage regulator. It's a common adjustable voltage regulator. It's been around for several decades. I think it came out in the 70s. Of course it's adjustable and it has better performance than the 78 series voltage regulators. That, you know, those were fixed regulators. But normally you would set it up in this configuration. So I just drew kind of a hybrid schematic showing the actual chip and the ac the can no. oh. <laughs> Snickers well we we have Snickers here he wants to sit on my lap <coughs> yep <laughs> he wants to get involved here <coughs> yeah why don't you turn this way and say hi? Hi, Stick. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now I have a cat on my lap, so I'll try to uh, go through this here. So what I've done here, I drew kind of a hybrid schematic showing the actual chip with the uh, schematic components down here. So you have your input voltage here and a bypass capacitor and this is the output pin. So we take some of the output and route it through resistors that's connected to the adjust pin and it creates a voltage divider at the adjust pin and the uh, ratio of the resistors dictates what the output will be. There's a formula for that. You can get that on the data sheet. I'm not going to go through that whole thing and how to calculate that, but pretty simple to use and the cat's back up here on the bench. Okay, so the cat jumping up on the bench, back down on my lap. It's kind of hard to work here, so. Well, sorry Snickers. It's not going to work out. But anyhow, um, so yeah, that's basically how this works. So what I've done here, I set up this circuit. And it's pretty much the same with a few extra components. So we have our voltage coming in. And we have some bypass capacitors here. And oh, the cat popped up again. And you can see the same voltage divider network here. But what I'm doing, and oh, Snickers. It's kind of lovey-dovey time for the cat. He wants to sit on my lap. He wants to get in my face. But <laughs> it's not going to work for making a video. Okay, let's try this again. So, yeah, we have the divider resistors. This one's adjustable, by the way. I put a capacitor here so I can connect a signal source. I'm going to use an op amp. It's important to understand that this circuit has no voltage gain so you're going to have to pre-amplify your signal of course using this preamp here I'm just using an op amp whatever op amp you want to use and you connect its output here 
and we have the DC blocking capacitor because we don't want to throw off the uh, DC bias points of the circuit. It'll throw off our preset output voltage. On the output circuit we have a few extra components. This here, the circle with the arrow, is a current sink. So current's going into it. And it's an important part of the circuit, and I'll explain momentarily. And at the midpoint between the output here and the current sink, there's a capacitor which blocks DC from getting into the speaker. And the other speaker just returns to the power ground. I'm showing separate grounds. They're physically connected, but I'm showing one as a signal ground and power ground because I don't want power signals flowing in the, um, the small signal portion of the circuit, which could cause some problems. And uh, somebody told me how to pronounce this Bougereau cell here, just to stabilize the output. It helps keep it from oscillating. I don't know if it's really a problem, but it doesn't hurt to have that there. Now, I can't just connect this directly to the speaker because there's that DC component. So I'm running it through a current source, which allows this point here to vary up and down in voltage. You know, a current source allows the current that we need for our output, and in theory has an infinite impedance, so it allows this voltage to swing up and down freely. That gives us our output voltage with enough current to drive a speaker. So that's really it for the circuit, it's pretty basic. So here is the circuit on the breadboard. Over here is the preamp from the last video. And over on this side, I placed the uh, voltage regulator. Going to need a large heat sink. This is a class A type amplifier. It's going to conduct steady current even at idle. So it's going to generate quite a bit of heat. Over here, I have a resistor I'm using for a current source. It's an 8 ohm 5 watt resistor. Now resistors make lousy current sources and we'll see why in a minute. But it will give this circuit you know, its most simple configuration. A few calculations I had to figure out was, well, how much current do I need in this circuit? And I'm going to supply this circuit with 12 volts. The amplifier will run with 12 volts. That means the output will be biased somewhere around 6 volts. The highest and lowest possible voltage relative to the output would be a plus 6 and minus 6 volts. Of course, in real life, the output cannot swing all the way to the rail, so it will be somewhat less. But just to make the calculation simple, we can say 6 volts. So if 6 volts with an 8 ohm load, we'll need 750 milliamps of current. And that will make sure we have enough peak current available to get the maximum power possible into our load. Another adjustment I'm doing here is using higher value resistors in this divider network. Normally you'd want to use lower value resistors. I believe this one is 240 ohms or 120 ohms and this is a lower value one as well. The reason they do that is because for this regulator to function properly, it has to have a minimum output current of a few milliamps. And some of that current flows through the resistor divider network. However, we don't have that issue. Plus, I don't want the impedance of this to be too low for the op amp to drive it. So I'm using higher values. So the, the input impedance is still pretty low, but... You know, it's high enough for the uh, op amp to handle it okay. Another thing I should mention is that you have to use a fairly large heat sink on this. Running at 12 volt supply, the resistor and the IC are both going to dissipate about 4.5 watts each. And because of the current limitations, 8 ohms is the minimum impedance I would recommend because you'll need a lot more current. You'll start running into the current limits of the IC if you try to use a lower impedance load. Okay, I'm putting a signal into the input and I'm scoping across the output. I have an 8 ohm resistor on the output. 
and I need to center this up so I turned it into clipping and I just want to kind of get that clipping so it's even across both channels as I tune that out let's see if I can uh, get that even a little better yeah that ought to do it so that allows us to get the maximum output and we're putting 1.93 volts into the 8 ohm load 1.93 squared divided by 8 0.465 watts of output so yeah it is not very powerful and the main culprit of that is using a resistor as a current source it's, it doesn't allow you to have very good output what I want to try to do later is to uh, replace this resistor with an actual current source and see if I can improve that and I hope I could get closer to one watt doing this your typical push-pull output stage you know not bridged or anything we'll put out around one to one and a half watts into an 8 ohm load maximum power before clipping so yeah I want to see if I can improve on what we're getting here but for now I want to see what the distortion looks like so I go the other way, get some waveforms on the screen. Turn that on. Let's get this turned off. Okay, so here is the 1 kilohertz fundamental. This is the 4.51% pilot signal that I put into the signal so I can, you know, meter the output. And uh, it's pretty clean. There's a small notch of a third harmonic here probably at a third of a percent maybe a little blip of a second order harmonic but you know the rest of it's perfectly clean so you know it's not looking too bad all right so now I hooked up a speaker and let's play some YouTube copyright safe music see what this thing sounds like hopefully I don't overdrive the uh, camcorder mic <laughs> Well, there's nothing wrong with it that I can hear. Let's see if I can improve on the circuit and add a current source and bring the output power up higher. Okay, I've replaced the resistor with this current source, or technically it's a current sink because using the conventional current flow, current goes into it. So if it goes into, it's a current sink. If it goes out, to, it's a current source. So this is in place of this part of the schematic here. This circle with the arrow is what this is. So that's connected to the output of the 317 and this is connected to the power supply I'm not going to go into all about current sources I've talked about them in a few different videos so I set it up to match with the 317's putting out of course it's not going to be perfect so I have to set the bias so everything's in the middle so let's see if we're getting anything better okay here's the waveform on the screen It's starting to clip already there and got it fairly well balanced so I'll just take it out of clipping and about there I guess so yeah you can see we are doing better not super great or anything but doing better 2.62 volts squared divided by 8 so now we're running about 850 milliwatts well, the current source is not going to be perfect. We're, we're we still lose some voltage across the transistor base emitter junction, and we lose about 0.7 volts or so in these uh, resistors. It's one ohm resistor there. I had to pair a couple two ohms in parallel because I don't have a one ohm. But um, yeah, we lose some voltage there, so we're not going to get rail to rail plus the 317 is not going to go rail to rail 
but we do fall shy of what, for example, an integrated circuit purpose-built audio amplifier would do you know, around uh, maybe close to a watt and a half with the 12 volt supply. So let's take a look at the distortion here. Let's turn that off. Wow. We have a larger waveform, so that's why this pilot signal is higher than before. But look at the distortion's gone. It's just a fundamental in the pilot signal. Maybe a little blip of a fifth there. But performance is very good. I'm curious of what it does at 10 kilohertz. Okay, we're at 10 kilohertz. That's clipping. Let's pull that back. Still pretty good. There's a couple little notches. Now this doesn't show a pilot signal because I don't have a 10 kilohertz signal made with a pilot. The pilot would be at 45 kilohertz anyway, so I really couldn't do that. The music player wouldn't be able to put that out. Okay, now we're looking at 20 hertz. And because the frequency is so low, the scope is updating slowly. So I have to tune that out. And again, the distortion is pretty low. The uh, signal resets every so often, and it makes that weird glitch. But, yeah, it's looking very good. Okay, we'll give you a sample of music with the constant current source. <laughs> Uh, once again, it sounds fine, which it should, because distortion is pretty low. So there you have it, the LM387 voltage regulator audio amplifier. That's it. Thanks for watching.